Okay, this one is one of my favorites. I love this mode, and there's actually a couple of regular nets that you can find on HF for this mode, Hell Shriver. Hell Shriver goes way back, and this video should give you some information on trying the Hell mode, Feld Hell as they call it. And man, it's, it's, it's really, really interactive. Using your eyes and your brain to decode what's on the screen, not letting the computer decode it for you, it's just awesome. And I hope to have a net going on this shortly so we can have a Feld Hell net maybe one Saturday a month and get people on these other forgotten digital modes. So let's check out Hell Schreiber. Feld Hell. Something that is one of my favorite modes. Check this out. A little bit different than a lot of the other modes. Being that you have to use some of your brain power to decode this mode on the screen. We're going to explain Hell Schreiber here and how this is different from PSK or FT8 or Olivia or Contestia. I really want to get some more people on this mode. This mode is just awesome. You can see here that here is VE3NOO in Canada. You can see here that the the way this displays is a little bit different than PSK. Uh, we'll talk about the history here, but I'm just uh, I met somebody here on on PSK and they were so strong and I said, hey, let's switch over to Hell because I can't find anybody on Hell Shriver to even complete this mission of a video because everybody is glued to FT8 and FT8 call and there's some contestant in Olivia out there. This goes way back to original machines with ticker tapes. And this is replicating that on the screen. And what I like about it is the fact that you can see as the QRM or the noise comes in, it does distort some of the image. And you're using your eyes and your brain power to look through there and say, man, what is that? Uh, so it's not totally computer decoding. Uh, it's just, it's fun. And unlike other modes, instead of having characters that just appear out of nowhere that make no sense, this throws some some shading in here that you can't really see the words unless you make them out. I can tell here that it says VE3NOO, no problem, Eric. Ex excuse for some QSB, your signal report 559 here in Kingston, FN14. So I can see what's going on here. I could I can make that out with my eyes and it's just something that and there's 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 several different hell modes if you look here there's feld hell slow hell and we'll we'll talk about those but as i have somebody on here i'm showing you a demonstration while it lasts because there's not and i hope after this video some more people really get into using this mode to at least to at least uh you know Try it and, and put some more hell back on the air. 90 minutes of South Africa. So, I like hell. It is the mode with longest QSO, 90 minutes of South Africa. He spent an hour and a half on Hell Schreiber. If you want to try Thor, I'm happy to make that for you. Okay, so that's going to be the next video you see while I have him on the air. But let's go back and talk about a little bit of the history of Hell Schreiber. Rudolf Hell was his name. Rudolf developed the technique of Hell Schreiber, which translates, I've seen a couple translations, bright pen, bright writing, light pen. But in the 1920s, he developed this mode or this communication method of Hell Schreiber using a Hell Schreiber machine that he developed in the 20s and started catching on in the 30s. And a Hell Schreiber machine back in the day had a keyboard and it had a transmitter and receiver in it and you know uh, I'm not an expert never touched one but from reading online had a ticker tape and less moving parts than the traditional typewriter uh, so it could be considered back in the day like a more of a radio fax sort of because it was drawing it or imaging it in a method on a ticker tape where you can see it 
So the Hell Schreiber, which is what you're looking at here, here's another model of an old one, and in fact one here in, in use from uh, a museum somewhere. So you type it out, and what happens is it takes the signal and transmits it in a different method. Picture it like this. You have a 7x7 seven seven grid. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Let's call it 7x7. Seven seven. And it draws each character in vertical columns using ons and offs. And the machine on the receiving end is using magnetic actuators with the signal received to punch out a certain area based on on or off. You know, If you look at it this way, it'd be black would be probably on and white would be off. And it would discern letters like this on a ticker tape. And you may notice that when I showed you on the video, you see there's, it looks to be like two or three columns here. And actually what, you know, in a perfect world, this is my transmitting here, but depending on the signal, you may see the receiving end that comes in as on a slant or it may not be perfectly straight. So in, back in the day with the Hell Schreiber machines, there was some sort of form of redundancy where it would actually print the character twice on the tape. And that compensated for timing errors and some other errors where if you couldn't read, let's say this was slanted, and it cut off the letter on the top of the tape, you'd still be able to make out the letter on the bottom. So it has to do with a little bit of timing to get this right on the tape uh, from, you know, the real paper tapes in the machines. And this is a computer-generated, you know, replica of it. So we're, there's no tape involved here. But you can see here that if this had two rows and it was slanting and you saw it had like a you know, slanted effect to it. Somehow, with a redundancy there, you can see half of one line and half of another to understand what the message was. So, redundancy in the 20s. I like referencing this Signal Wiki site here that shows a lot of different modes, you know, because it's, it's, it's hard in this day and age to get all this information right off the radio on my screen. So, I'll show you here. You see some other modes that are available in Digital Master, like... Uh, you know, fel uh, Feld Hell is what I was using. That's the most common. Um, that's the one a lot of people are using. And there's Slow Hell, there's Feld Hell 5, Feld Hell 9, FSK Hell. And you could probably guess that each one, you know, operates at a different speed or, or uh, you know, duty cycle or whatever. So looking at here, the Feld Hell I was on was roughly 25 words per minute, 122.5 baud. And of course, like other modes, like you can see, there's many, many Contestia and Olivia modes, and some of them are very wide. So this one would have 350 hertz bandwidth, but look at something like Feldheld times 9, or X9. 1100 baud, 225 words a minute, but it occupies over 3, you know, 3000 hertz. So, you know, I don't see too many people on these other ones, but then you got Slow Held. Why is it called Slow Hell? Because it's slow. <laughs> 14 baud. 2.8 words per minute. That's breaking it down into the smallest possible form. Probably each punch out of a letter in that 7x7 seven seven grid is probably one transmission. And you can actually see and see what they look like on the waterfall on this page. And you can listen to what it sounds like. Let's see if we can, if you can hear this on the microphone. What that basically, it sounds like CW, but what that's basically doing is punching out each individual, or I say punching out, it's transmitting each individual on and off at a time at a slow rate. And you can probably guess that slow hell would be a lot more uh, efficient in poor conditions, but not as fast as felled hell. But there's a mode for everybody out here. And you can see here there's a lot of different uh, methods, including uh, Feld Hell, as I said, 9. Doesn't even sound like Hell Schreiber anymore. It sounds almost like a fax machine. I'm not sure you can hear that, but it's definitely uh, sounds like a 56K modem. So we'll look at this site again, bandplans.com, which I've showed you before, to see exactly where a suggested frequency would be for Hell. And look here. 
14.063 through about 14.069 for your common Feld Hell range. Now, you know, here's a, a good point. Like, see here, we got Feld Hell watering hole number two, 14.073, but that's probably going to be a bad place there because 14.074, well, there's your FT8. Then you have a another Hell range here up above uh, 14.074 all the way up to 14.082. So, Really, these are suggested. Now, the best practice is to make sure that you're not in the middle of an FT8 watering hole when you're trying to call Hell Shriver. And make sure you're not interrupting somebody in CW. But what's really to keep you from operating it right here? You know, if there's, if there's no chip 64 here on 14.077, then why not call on there if the band is empty right there on the waterfall? As long as you're staying in your area, I'm not sure how solid these numbers are. I mean, we've come to a point where PSK is always on 14.070 and FT8 is always on 14.074, but I've seen Olivia all over the band, so uh, at least in the digital portion. So just kind of keep a courtesy on where you can operate, but really stay around where the band suggests so that other people that are looking for a Hellschreiber contact are going to assume it's here. And if you're way up here at 14.077, they're probably not looking there. So just, you know, if you have an empty spot somewhere up towards the RTTY section, maybe there's no MFSK on 14.080. Maybe you want to throw out a Hellschreiber call there and not interrupt anyone, but they're probably going to be looking somewhere else. In comparison to PSK 31, which is like a staple, Hellschreiber may have a little bit better readability than PSK because of the fact that it it will decode or show up on the ticker here with instead of missing or wrong characters, it will show up with a grainy, you know, I wish I had somebody on here uh, to see what I'm talking about, but you saw before, you it's more like this mode more resembles CW than it would PSK because CW, you're using your ears along with your brain to decode, and Hellschreiber, you're using your eyes and your brain to decode, whereas PSK is completely generated and decoded with the computer. Ham Radio Concepts is brought to you by HamRadioPrep.com. It's never been easier to learn about Ham Radio before you take the exam. And Ham Radio Prep makes it fun and guarantees your success. Visit HamRadioPrep.com. Use the code ERIC20 to instantly save 20% off every course you buy. Remember the name, HamRadioPrep.com.